Okay, Recon's video on Sunday, the 7th of July, 2024, just gone 2.15 a.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend. Time for another weekend futures market recap. I'll go through 15 of the largest futures markets, and I'll show you what I'm seeing on my charts. Do hope you had a good week's trading. If you celebrated the 4th of July, hope you had a good 4th. If you're having a long weekend, hope you're enjoying a long weekend. I understand it's pretty hot in the States right now. Here in Noosa, Queensland in Australia, not so much. Uh, we've had a very, very rainy week, but things are going to get better this week. Wednesday, I think we get a little bit of a break and uh, the swell's going to come up as well. So that'll be good. Anyway, let's talk about the charts. So last weekend, we talked about a couple of things. One is that we were going to have some positive bias because of the seasonal trade. The seasonal trade being the bullish bias leading into holidays, particularly the 4th of July. And we're up 100 points based on the close Friday to Friday. So that turned out nicely. Still got a data run on that seasonal trade that runs out on Monday, but that's been very interesting. So we're pushing up here at, what, 5,621. So that's pretty good for the week. We also talked about uh, the possible landmines in the way with the elections and what that might do to the markets. So far, we have news from the UK that the Conservatives lost incredibly badly to the Labour government. No surprise there. That was well understood. What's interesting is the British pound has been doing really well uh, over the last couple of months, seeing that play out. So they obviously don't think that uh, that's such bad news in the UK, that we have uh, a change to a more left-leaning government. We've got the second round of the French elections starting today, Sunday, so we'll get the results of that fairly quickly. Don't know what's going to happen there, but the euro is pretty strong as well. Um, so whatever happens there, the market seems to be accepting that. And then in the US, a couple of murmurings that things might be announced on Monday, possibly, that Biden's stepping aside. Who knows? The market seems not to be very interested in that either. So we're just pushing up and up. But anyway, so let's talk about the E-mini first. We'll start with the daily chart going all the way down to the tick bar chart. Here's the daily chart, left-hand side. There's those uh, strong days, Monday through Friday. And we've got nothing in terms of volume patterns, no professional bars, no amateur bars, no uh, momentum patterns. Although this is starting to look pretty strong here with a 4 million read on better momentum here. We're getting back up to reads where we get into trouble, a little bit of blow off and so on. So that's going to be interesting to watch over the next uh, several days and week or two. And we're busting up through resistances. So on the right hand side on better sine wave, all the resistances here were well above. And as we go down the time frames, you, you'll see we keep on pushing above and above these resistances. So that just means we've got to put in more pullback to end of trends. So things aren't over. Trend continues on the daily chart. 135 minute chart. Here we go. This is Friday's trade. We get Rambo pack into the close. Not surprising there. Uh, exactly three 135 minute bars in a day session of the E-mini. So that was Friday's activity. So everybody's off on the 4th of July and not many people showed up in terms of volume uh, on the Friday. So that's why we get small average trade size, a lot of amateur trading there into those new highs. So another little family there of Rambo patterns. I always talk about the lows of the amateur sequence. That's a really important area. If that gets broken, we'll go for a little bit of a run to the downside. So we'll be talking about there. So 55.85. That's kind of the low of that sequence. Again, pull back to end of trend. We've got another resistance here on the 135 minute chart, and we pushed above that even. So this just shows how strong the market is. 45 minute chart, same thing, Rambo patterns at highs. Here we got a nice little uh, momentum pattern. So better momentum here. So the exhaustion sell that we had, bullish divergence, flush flush patterns down here in this sequence. So the sell off move and the size of the sell off move is then mirrored by the excess blow off move on the other side. So the volume that we're selling it down here is getting out of those positions with its excess volume pattern going on here. But hasn't come with blue professional bars. We've not trailed the stop up. This is just the first blush just showing us that we got a little bit of exhaustion uh, activity into these highs. And we're above resistances here. You can see on the 45 minute charts, the low and the intermediate uh, here. So on this low time frame, we've got to make pullback to end of trend. So I'll be looking for that this week to see if those things play out. 15 minute chart. Here we go. This is nice. So this is last weekend's activity. We sold off into the close on Friday and then Monday, all the blue professional bars, this vertical solid yellow line marks the beginning of the week. And so into the open on Monday, there we go. The blue professional bars stepping at the lows, market rallies, breaks into an uptrend. The background's in red, which means we're in a confirmed uptrend in terms of price and volume. You can see the price bars are all red showing we're in an uptrend on better sine wave and we're above the important blue professional bars meaning we're in an uptrend in terms of volume patterns as well. Into those highs, we had some Rambo patterns here, some bearish divergence there. 
but again we're above resistance on the low and the intermediate time frames on the 15 minute chart so all of those things have got to play themselves out into pullback to end of trend moves and we've got to see certainly on the 15 minute chart blue professional bars coming in to mirror these blue professional bars at the lows so it's going to be an interesting week I think because we'll start to see some of those things play out and here we go the 13,500 tip bar chart showing the day and the night session. So on the uh, minute charts, I'm just showing you the day session at ES.D, which means day session only. The tip bar charts we're using at ES with a little bit of a funny tail here, which just adjusts the rollover date in the trade station data. But this is using the day and night session. So you can see the open Sunday night into Monday, uh, and then we had exhaustion sell bullish divergence down here on that Monday. We tested with lovely little Rambo pattern down here. There we go. Uh, we look for the highs of that amateur sequence as we sell off. That gets broken. Bang. The amateur is getting wrong footed and the market rallies. Uh, big pro bars here. So blue professional bars with a background in blue showing extra high average trade size. So that's important. Blue professional bars and I would suggest that what they were doing was they were buying the breakout. So you can see that level up here at 55, just under 80, 55, 75 or so there has been an important level previously. We ramped off it with a Rambo pattern here and here with a flush pattern. But this time they were buying the breakout. That was a gathering pattern, buying the breakout to new highs. So again, on the tip bar chart, we're going to have to see that type of activity. The background has to be blue, showing us big pro bars. We've had one professional bar, I beg your pardon, we've actually had a couple big pro bars at the end of Friday, so that's interesting there. In terms of better sine wave, we put in a little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. We've still got to put in a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, so we're above that, pushing to those highs. And the background needs to turn grey into a downtrend before this thing is over, so that's interesting there. That was a beautiful little signal midweek with the Rambo pattern there into those lows, and we ramped after that. So there we go. That's the uh, E-mini. We're in the middle of a uh, rally phase that this week's going to be interesting in terms of playing out and finding where that next reach area is where we start to see blue professional bars coming in at these uh, lower time frames. Instead of doing the tip bar charts on all the 15 uh, futures markets, I thought we'd do the higher time frame charts, the what I call the daily charts, but really um, there are two time frames, the 460 minute and the daily charts here. So the way I like to do it on all of these futures markets, look at the four charts side by side with the uh, daily chart, the highest time frame chart on the left hand side, looking in terms of volume and price. And then on the right hand sides, we've got a third of that time frame, which is a 460 minute chart. There are three 460 minute bars in a day session of the futures market of the euro. And here, same thing, volume and price but we look at all of those four together and we can start to see patterns. This is the most important chart, top left chart, because it shows us the background and with the trend coloring and where the really important blue professional bars are. And so here we go. This is the euro. And on this little retrace here, we found blue professional bars coming in here with an amateur bar down, testing into those lows at 107, whatever that low was down there. Yeah, just just above 107. This turned out to be a great trade for me this week. I took profits at 8.75, 108.75 on Friday at the close, which was good. What I'm wondering is whether I should be in it for the long holder here, because what we've got going on is potentially breaking up above uh, 9.7. I've been wittering on about this over the last several months, thinking that each of these moves up might take us into a stronger move on the euro. And really, it's because of this. We've now got another signal here, triple supports happening. Big things happen at triples. We've been looking for this area uh, and signs of strength after a big things happen at triple. The first big things happen at triple signal there, which is that background in, in red. So we came back down and we broke into an uptrend here at this point. April time, we got a sign of strength there, but it went nowhere, found resistance. We've come back down again. Now we put in a little pullback to end of trend. Uh, cyclical support come in there with intermediate and highest time frame here all t come together. Now what we want to do is come back, find a resistance there and break back above that resistance, which will give us another sign of strength there on the euro chart. But if you look at the whole picture, it's not all come together. British pounds, so the British pound's been doing quite well. Let's have a look at this chart here. Blue professional bars, exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, hold the market by the breakout here into an uptrend. We're just in a little bit of weakness at the moment. We had some blue professional bars 
Mars, maybe taking some profits here, but in that weak area we've come back to test, and it looks like we're busting up through 28.7, will be breaking us into another uptrend. It's all looking good in terms of better sine wave here. All the bars are red. We're going to break above this into an uptrend at that point. Background's in red here on the lower time frame chart. So the pound is, is looking interesting. Aussie dollar, this was a nice signal here with the Aussie dollar at 64. Big pro bars at those lows. So super high average trade size and the trailing stops kept us in this move and we're about to break through 68s here. So blue professional bars, blue professional bars, big pro bars here, gathering pattern before that breakout above this important triangle area here. That'll be interesting to take off to the upside. And lastly, Japanese yen. Japanese yen at these lows. We're making Rambo patterns, but it's still a downtrend. So Rambo is a little bit weak. Getting above the high of this Rambo bar, which is 63.44, would be interesting for a little bit of a rally back into this area to 67. Um, but at the moment, still in the downtrend. Background's in uh, grey on Japanese yen. Ten-year notes, ten-year notes also look interesting. On this lowest time frame chart, you can see big pro bars coming in here at the lows, 107.23. Then we get the exhaustion sell signals, bullish divergence, flush flush patterns here. As so we're testing and testing into those, we've got rid of a lot of volume at this point here. We're starting to break out of that zone. And on the daily chart here, we had a strong day on Friday. There's the exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, flush flush patterns here at those lows. And that could be that we're going to have a, a, a little bit of a lurch up to 112 to see if we can break through there to the upside. But it's looking strong on the 10-year notes, which is, means that rates are coming down. Maybe people are getting worried about the economy. Gold, this was a super nice little uh, test up to here. So remember that up into 2400 at these highs, big pro bars, so that's super important. But we're coming back up to test into those areas, and we've still got to complete this move in terms of cycles. So on better sine wave on the daily chart, we bust above resistance into an uptrend here, and we're putting in pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. So I think we're definitely going to go up through those highs and cause some uh, panic uh, at those highs. But just bear that in mind that we've got all these blue professional bars, big pro bars, sitting there as like a shadow uh, over this move, playing itself out with pullback to end of trend. They ripple through the time frames, pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, then we're putting in pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, and then we'll put in pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame there. Silver, slightly different pattern here. Silver, they were buying the breakout at 26, big pro bars here. We got exhaustion buy at that point, and we're coming back up. So it looks like we're going to test up into those highs. Here, in terms of cycles, we're putting in pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame here, but we haven't put in pullback to end of trend yet on the intermediate time frame, and we're busting above resistance on the highest time frame here. But we've not played these cycles out to top that market out. It might be interesting to see what happens above that 33 level on silver. Next chart, Bitcoin. Ooh, Bitcoin got uh, wrecked this weekend. Down at 54, I think we got down to. Yeah, the low 53.5 there. But these are amateur down bars at the moment. We're having a bounce back up to 57. I think people thought that was good buying down there. Obviously, this 50 level of support on Better Pro Am is absolutely key. Yes, we had a blow off move at the beginning of the year back in March. Exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, blue professional bars at those highs. And we haven't yet started to find support on better sine wave here. But there'll be an opportunity in the next few weeks there. What we're looking for next is, is where the blue professional bars start to step in uh, here on the lower time frame charts. You can see as yet they haven't come in. That little move up was amateur up bar. Yep too early and came down from there to 54s. But no blue professional bars come in yet. We had the blue professional bars up here at these highs. They've not come back in at these lows. So it's got to play itself out. In terms of cycles, they'll start to play first on the lower chart, 480 minute chart here. We've got the first big things happen at triples, but we haven't got a sign of strength from there. We've not broken above resistance into an uptrend on the lower time frame chart. So we're coming into an area that's interesting uh, because of this trailing stop here, um, but it's not come together yet. We've not got blue professional bars on the lower time frames coming in. So crude, we've got some Rambo patterns here on the lower time frame charts. Here, this is what's important, the blue professional bars. It's a shadow that's causing these bounces. Amateur down bars getting wrong-footed here, come back up to test. 
got a flush pattern here, come back up to test this time. The amateurs were maybe getting excited on the upside. They were getting excited on the downside here on the upside, up to 84, could be coming back down to test those lows. And until we see blue professional bars, this is the last one that we had on the lower time frame here of 72, and we bounced off there. Um, but it's not conclusive in terms of a trend direction. We're just bouncing and bouncing. I know this area is super important down here. You can see all the exhaustion cells, bullish divergence, flush patterns, whole family of blue professional bars come in here at these lows at 60, whatever that level. Yep, just over 60 it was. That's important. But we don't really have a clear direction on crude yet. Natural gas, natural gas down here testing into these lows. So we have big pro bars here at four selling it down and then it, we got down to 240s and the big pro bars are coming in here. So this is an interesting level down here. We bounced previously off Rambo patterns down here. We got too excited, exhaustion by bearish divergence. We fell back down 230. We're playing with those lows. So let's see if we have blue professional bars step in there soon. And in terms of cycles, yeah, this is playing out nicely. So here we go, pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. We're putting in pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. And so that might be an area that starts to get interesting for a bounce from down here. Rambo patterns at the moment on the lower time frame chart. Copper, see all these big pro bars, they were buying the lows down here at 360. They bought the test at 360. They bought the breakout above 420 here, and then they took profits at five. So it's a little unusual to see these big pro bars so close together, but we've got amateur up bars testing into these highs at the moment. So that's looking a little bit weak and we'll probably find a support in the intermediate time frames soon coming in here. There might be a little bit of a trade to be had from here to test back up to the 520 level. You can see it's bouncing off Rambo patterns. We've broken out of these Rambo patterns here, down here. So we're testing back up at the moment uh, on copper. And lastly, the AGs. So the poor old AGs. I was excited about the AGs a couple of months ago when they did this breakout, but it was just big pro bars on the upside, not on the downside. And so we weakened from there, lower lows on uh, corn, but we're playing out pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame here on the daily chart there. So that might be an area that we, where we start to hold down here. Soybeans on the daily chart here. Last time we saw blue professional bars exhaustion buy, selling it down at that point. So they've not come back in at 1088 or so to pick it up yet on soybeans. And lastly, wheat. Wheat, a lot going on here. So they were selling it down at this point here on that rally. Again, selling it down, but starting to get interested again. Big pro bars down here with an exhaustion sell signal. So that's looking better. And we just need to play it out in terms of cycles. So on the daily chart, we've got resistance on the intermediate and the highest time frame here. We're playing this out. We'll find support on the intermediate time frame soon. And then we'll put in a little bit of testing until we get that support on the highest time frame there on the daily chart of wheat. So we've still got a little bit of time before we find that low on wheat, but that's getting interesting. At least we put in our exhaustion cell signal on wheat. So there we go. Hopefully that video wasn't too long. It's good to look at the longer time frame charts from time to time. The two standouts for me were the strength in the Forex chart, so Euro, Aussie, British pound. That was interesting. And also the strength that's happening in the 10-year notes. Those, those are going to be interesting. And gold and silver charts into those recent highs. Gold and silver are always good for a good headline making moves. So be interesting to see what comes out in the press. Anyway, hope your trading is going well and looking forward to next week's trade.